Hi everyone, this is my volcanic hazard assessment. My name is Anastasia Bundy. I'm sorry I really tried to learn how to pronounce this volcano in Icelandic, but it's not going to happen. So I'm just going to, for this presentation, call it the E-Volcano. So, general information about the volcano is it's in the southern part of Iceland. It's a subglacial volcano. This volcano is also connected with several other volcanoes on the island, and the volcano it has the most connections with is Ketla. They are located, all, all these volcanoes are located on the East Volcanic Zone of Iceland, which is the most active zone in the region. The main composition of the volcano magma is alkaline basaltic magma. So here's some eruptive history for the E-volcano. There have been five previous eruptions. These eruptions occurred in 912, 1612, 1613, 1821 to 23, and in 2010. So on the screen I have some past eruptive estimated volumes of the previous eruptions that were estimated through a chronostratigraphic study that was done by uh, the person done on the screen. On the two pictures over on the left, the top one is just talking about where the exact basaltic magma or alkaline basaltic magma is. The one below it is kind of the general shape of the volcano. So the most recent eruption was in 2010, obviously. This eruption lasted for several months. It had lots of ash that was thrown out of the volcano, which caused lots of problems with air travel throughout Europe. The ash was thrown around six miles in the atmosphere. The small particles of this ash also carried bits of glass, which if it happened to be sucked into a jet engine from an airplane flying over, it could cause the hot jet engine to liquefy the glass and then for it to coat the inside of the uh, engine and cause some major problems with it. So there were also lava fountains, which were seen all along the glacier. These fountains were up to 150 meters high. The lava fountains gave off large amounts of heat, which caused the snow to melt and excess water to begin flowing down the volcano. Lava falls were also present as change in magma flow direction was caused. This is also due to some of the erosion of the ice from the lava fountains. 2,000 residents were forced to evacuate in the areas around the volcano, but luckily there were no casualties. So for my hazard assessment, there is a connection between the E-volcano and Kedla. One of these eruptions usually follows very close after the other one. Usually it's the E-volcano and then Ketla right afterwards. Both volcanoes usually are very explosive when they do erupt and throw lots of ash, rocks, pumice, and just general debris from the volcanoes into the surrounding areas. There are several small cities around the base of the volcano, which is important if you need to evacuate everybody on short notice. Large amounts of ash is probably the most hazardous part of the e-volcano erupting. The ash um, emissions cause breathing problems for the locals as well as possible pyroclastic flows. So heat from the magma fountains, which happened in the 2010 eruption, caused ice to melt and lots of water was moving which makes it possible for lahars and pyroclastic flows to become a problem, which is a big issue for the people living near the volcano since these usually have a very abrupt time when they begin. In previous eruptions, lots of ash and explosions have been present and are likely to happen again in a future eruption. Luckily, there is usually a lot of lead up 
to the volcano eruption with lots of earthquakes, so it usually gives a fair amount of warning before it erupts again. And here is my reference page.